Did God the Father have a separate will than His Son, Jesus? That's what this study is going to be about today. You can turn in your King James Bible to John chapter 5. Um, this argument has been brought up recently, so I have not addressed this. Um, the different wills of the Father and the Son, and there is a difference between the Father and the Son. Let me state that right at the outset. There are liars out there that say that Brian Denlinger does not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Well, that's a flat lie. Of course I believe that He's the Son of God. The Bible says that He's the Son of God. I do not, however, believe that He is God the Son. Okay? See how people do that? I say Jesus is not God the Son because that term appears nowhere in Scripture. That makes two different gods. God the Father, God the Son, and then you have the third God, God the Holy Spirit. It's three different titles. And they say, well, they're not the same. Well, then that's, if they're not the same, that's three different gods. Plain English here, common sense. Trinitarians don't have much of that. They're philosophers. Uh, with philosophy, you can basically stretch things and make the Bible teach what you want, or not the Bible, but you know your own teachings and official doctrine of your church and whatever else. That's the problem there. Um, the Bible warns about being spoiled by philosophy after the tradition of men and not after Christ, after the rudiments of the world, you know, not after Christ. You have to be careful of that. You can't make your truth based on man's wisdom, which is what philosophy basically means if you boil it down. But uh, what about this thing of the Father and the Son having two separate wills? Let's look about this. John chapter 5, five verse 30. I think I said verse 20. Verse 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Are there two different wills? Yes. I seek my, not mine own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. See now, if you're a philosopher and you're trying to produce, or, or uh, well, produce, but uh, if you're trying to promote the theory of the Trinity, then you say, well, see, Father and Son, put my Bible down there, Father has a will, Son has a will. So, because they each have a separate will, then they must have a separate personality, and if they have a separate personality, then that means two different persons. Because how could the same person have two different wills? Unless they have multiple personality disorder or something. Um, well, I'm going to show you that actually the Bible teaches that you can have different wills within one body. I'm going to prove it from the scriptures, not my own opinions. Luke chapter 22. Turn to Luke chapter 22. And I know, I know that a lot of you listen to me while you're driving to work or while you're at work and whatever else and you can't be turning in your Bible. I get that. But uh, you really need to make a practice of it if you can turn in your Bible while you're listening to these sermons. You need to actually be seeing the scriptures for yourself making sure that I'm telling you the truth. That's extremely important. Luke chapter 22, verse 39 through 42. Let's read that. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing... Remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. All right? Not my will, but thine be done. Is that two separate wills? Yes. Are there two separate persons? No. You say, but it has to be. There are two separate wills. It has to be two different persons. But you see, the problem is, if you want to come up with that, then you need to show me one verse of Scripture in here where plural persons refers to God. There's not one. Documented it in my book, The Godhead Doctrine. And again, let me just ex explain. What is the Godhead? Very simple. God the Father is the soul. Jesus is the body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. Body, soul, spirit. Man is made after the similitude of God. Body, soul, spirit. There's no different beings up there and whatever else, each one with a, a unique God title, but yet they're somehow just one God. That's nonsense. That is a satanic philosophy. And if you want to prove me wrong, then you need to give me scripture that clearly states persons in regard to the Godhead. 
We already know the word Trinity is not in the Bible, so we'll just scrap that. But, oh, persons, this, this three persons is the very heart of the Trinitarian system. I've noticed that over the years. They have to always go back to three separate persons. Why? Well, because there's a future fulfillment. Three separate persons in the book of Revelation. The Antichrist, the dragon, and the false prophet. I believe at that time we'll all be claiming to be God. But in relation to Jehovah God, the Lord Jesus Christ, there's only one God. There's only one person. And you can't prove more than one. Every time you see God in the word person, it's always singular, never plural. Not my opinion. Matter of fact. Matthew chapter 26. Well, we'll have to disagree. I'll have to agree to disagree. Well, then you're departing from Scripture. Don't call yourself a Bible believer. Just that simple. Matthew chapter 26, verse 42. Well, if you just study the Trinitarian philosophers more, Brian, you would, you would be able to see things differently. I'm not going to study a bunch of tr Trinitarian philosophers. This is my authority. I don't care. Get the biggest PhDs, THDs, guy with six, seven earned degrees, whatever else, spent his whole life studying, you know, theology or something like that. I could care less what he says. If it doesn't line up with the book, then I reject it. It's just that simple. I don't worship education. You see? Oh, how could you speak against all oh, the doctor, scholar? The... You're worshiping man. Matthew chapter 26, verse 42 says, He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. There's separation between father and son. I'm not a modalist. I don't teach that Jesus manifests himself in three different ways. No. Okay, there's a difference between a body, a soul, and a spirit. And I'm going to show you in this study. I'm going to give it a little, a little hint to you because I know a lot of people can't endure to the end of my sermons because it's just too much scripture and too sarcastic. That's right. I don't smile enough, you know, so whatever. But uh, here's the thing. You have a separate will than your soul and your spirit. You say, huh? What? Stick with me. I'll show you. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 through 38. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul... Is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Hmm. He began to be exceeding sorrowful and very heavy. I go through that on a regular basis. And if you're saved, you do too. There's times that for no reason at all, you just get this sorrow and you, I don't know what's going on. And you know, the modern world would call it depression. But the Bible calls it sorrow. And you'll go into this, this thing of sorrow and just, oh, oh, and, you know, what's wrong? I, I don't know what's wrong. I ate good food. It's not a nutritional thing. I got plenty of sleep. It's not that I'm tired. Um, nothing really is going bad in my life right now. I just am exceeding sorrowful. I don't know what's going on. It's your soul. There's a difference there, you see. Verse 39, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, He's talking about his soul being exceeding sorrowful. Then he goes and he prays, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You know, it'd be a real sorrowful thing to know spiritually I have to die. I'm going to be dying a very painful death. And the soul is very sorrowful about it, but the soul's not going to feel the pain. The flesh is. And the flesh is saying, uh, is there some other way we can do this? This is a bad situation here. I don't like this. This is going to be very painful. Verse 
Verse 40, And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is also willing, because the flesh and the spirit have the same will, because it's just one person. Uh, you know, the one person that's of the three persons, or something. Uh, no, it says, uh, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Can the flesh and the spirit and the soul have different wills? Yes. Does that mean that they are different personalities? No. Does it mean that they're different persons? No. Are they different gods? God the Father, God the Spirit, God the, you know, Son. Um, they all have different wills? No. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that within you, there are three different things. Body, soul, spirit. And your soul and your spirit can feel things differently than your body. And the Lord showed us that. He was down here. He took on the likeness of sinful flesh. The likeness. Not that he was sinful, but he took on the likeness of sinful flesh. He felt pain. You know? I'm sure that there were times that he slept and he probably woke up and, oh, I laid wrong or whatever else. Ouch, you know. They're hammering the nails in there and things are whipping him and, and whatever else. He wasn't just, I don't even feel anything. I have this, you know, special body that doesn't feel pain. No, he felt pain. Believe me, he suffered and he died. If you believe what the Bible says. So, before that time comes, he's saying, the Spirit indeed is willing. I know what the Scriptures say. The Holy Spirit inspired Scriptures. The Spirit is willing. You see? Um, but the flesh is weak. This is going to be really painful. Is there some other thing that we can do here? Is there some other thing that we don't have worked out? Or, you know, I... And you'll find yourself doing this. I just say to myself, why can't these Trinitarians get this? And the spirit inside my mind says, because they're lost. Lost people can't understand the scriptures. That's why they add to the scriptures. They're liars. Yeah, okay, uh, that makes sense. You, you know, and, and you see this thing with the Lord when he's down here. He's just constantly frustrated with people. And he's saying, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Just, ah. Uh. <laughs> and you do the same thing. Go to the store and there's the rock music playing. And there's some pervert walking by with rainbow hair. And some pedophile flag thing on their shirt or something. And here's some weird people over there. And there's this, you just vexing vexation you say oh god why does it have to happen this way and the spirit says uh oh, because that's prophesied it's in the scriptures it's written oh yeah i know <laughs> not my will but thine be done you see what i'm saying we don't have to die on the cross the way that jesus did in terms of physically you know thankfully for that but uh, you have to die spiritually take up your cross daily and follow the lord crucify the flesh Put down the flesh. It's constantly there. Yet you have to take care of the flesh. Nourish and cherish your own flesh. I can't just, you know what? My flesh is wicked. My flesh is sinful. Therefore, I'm not eating anymore. I am not going to feed this wicked flesh ever again. I will have nothing to do with it. Well, then I die. <laughs> well, then, I'll, okay, I'll just give a little bit of food to the flesh. Well, then I'll be sickly. So you mean, wait a second. I have to feed my flesh to the point where I am strong and, you know, in good health. Wouldn't that mean my flesh would be able to sin better? Yes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then you're going to live your life as a Christian. You're going to have that struggle all the time. We'll be looking at the scriptures here as we go through this study. You will have the struggle between your flesh and your spirit and your soul. And there will be times that you will feel rotten and there will be no logical explanation for it. Because something's going on spiritually that your soul feels. But you don't understand it in your flesh. And you'll contradict yourself many times and you'll say, these people are so wicked, they, I don't understand why this is happening. And your spirit says, you have a Bible? Open it and read it. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But my flesh wants to see good leadership. My flesh wants to see a return to the good times. But the Bible says, 
The Spirit bears witness. Ugh. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hey, America is going to be falling apart, and there's going to be war and people dying, and there's going to be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. Wars and rumors of wars. Oh, this isn't going to be fun, <laughs> you know. Flesh is weak. I don't want to have to go through a famine or real pestilence, not some made-up little media propaganda stunt to get people to wear stupid masks on their faces and take a, you know, hokey pokey in the shoulder. Uh, no, I'm talking real pestilence. I mean, what do you think is going to happen when a bunch of bodies start dropping down dead and everything else and there's not enough people to bury them if some kind of war or whatever hits? It starts to breed disease. They might not get them buried or disposed of quick enough and all of a sudden there's people getting sick, truly sick. It's pestilence. Oh, why would we have to go through that? The Bible said it would happen. Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, he said it would happen. The beginning of SARS, not the time of Jacob's trouble. The beginning of SARS comes before the time of Jacob's trouble. Is your flesh willing? Is the spirit willing? If you're saved, it doesn't mean you have two different persons. You, you see how it works? Not that hard to figure out. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse uh, 12. We'll start there, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of of God. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's a difference there. Now, you know, think about that one with modern Christianity. Who would like to be saved? Come up forward and you can have this wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. Your best life now. Uh, all this stuff. That's the will of the flesh. Hey, I could become part of this country club here that they call a church. Man, there's some good-looking girls here. Look at that one over there in the miniskirt. Oh, boy. I saw this girl up in the, in the worship team, and oh, man, she's good-looking. And I could be part of this here club, you know. And, and It's the will of, of the flesh. Who's willing to come and live for Jesus Christ? Who's willing to come and get saved and have your family turn against you and have your job turn against you and get angry and threaten you to... Get be fired because you witnessed on the job site. Who wants to have your life get worse? Is that appealing to the flesh? No, it's not. And you read through this Bible and you look and you say, oh, once I was stoned, uh, you know, I was beaten with rods. Night and day I've suffered shipwreck in the deep. You know, uh, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true suffering whipped chastened you know. oh that's going to hurt oh, oh, oh yeah how about the christians that uh, lived through the whole dark ages time women that are taken out and they have their babies thrown to the pigs and they are forced to watch the pigs eat their baby alive um how about the women that go and they have their breasts cut off while they're being hanged like this how about the men that had their arms by the catholic church tied behind their backs and they're lifted like this behind their back as their legs are tied with weights. How about the men that they throw into a bull that's heated up, big metal bull and things. They open up, they throw the guy into there and let him cook. Not very fun when you think about it. How about the Christians that are put out into the Colosseum and let the lions come in and eat them alive? Do you want to be part of that? Well, then it'll have to be the will of God for you to get saved. The Holy Spirit of God has to come upon you and say, I'll get saved and I don't care what it costs me. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. 
Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Not going to conform to the world, not going to give in to the world, then it's the Holy Spirit of God that tells you to do that. And even God manifest in the flesh when he looked at the cross. Oh boy, this is going to stink. This is going to hurt bad. <laughs> My little way of saying stink, it, you know, understand what I'm saying. It's going to be a bad situation. Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It doesn't mean that there were two different persons or three, you know, that the Spirit and the Father, the Holy Spirit, you know, is the bird that flies around and the Father's up there. He's another person going, you know, pacing the floor in heaven, you know, oh, my son has to go through this and, oh, it's just going to, he's the soul. Why is that so hard? I don't understand. It's this, you know, heresy. Oh, oh, you know, like I've rejected the Lord or something. Huh? I mean, Trinitarians, you leave me no choice to, other than I have to believe you're lost. If you don't understand this basic thing of Jesus being the body of God, if you don't get that, then you're not redeemed. You're not saved. You've been born again by your own flesh, not by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit's not there revealing these things to you. I mean, I preached for years on the Godhead Doctrine, wrote a book about the Godhead Doctrine. Read it. It's not some kind of a thing that's just, we can't understand God, the very nature, the essence of God. Oh, we're just not able, in our finite minds. And, uh, it's just philosophy is all it is. There are certain things, yeah, sure, the mystery of godliness is great, absolutely. It's what the Bible says. You know, you know the Bible, the Bible, not man's philosophy. Um, but there are certain things that are just plainly laid out. It's not that hard to figure out. Just believe what you're reading. Believe the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will guide you into that understanding. If you're saved, if you're lost, well, then yeah. Natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. 2 Peter chapter 1. Well, okay, I can see some of the points that you're making, but I, I dare not... I dare not come out against the Trinity because what would the seminaries think about me and, and all my, you know, uh, the other sons of the alma mater that I graduated from, you know, we're a holy family. <laughs> Remember Ruckman saying, and uh, respected Ruckman, but the, some things that the guy said were just ridiculous, but I remember him saying the one time about, you know, the right way to do things is not to have a church building because they're not in the scriptures. They're actually anti-New Testament. But, you know, then people would think you're crazy. I gave that up a long time ago. And I hope you do too. Let people think that you're crazy. I mean, how are you going to get along with the world? Well, I want to toe the line so I can look like a respectable Christian and the news media won't attack me and people in the local area won't attack me. They won't think I'm crazy. They won't, you know, cast out my name as evil. And what it, It's not possible. They, they did it to Jesus. They'll do it to you. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You know the best way that you can prove that this is God's holy word right here, this King James Bible? Uh, the best way to prove it is to say that uh, man wouldn't write a book like this. Are you kidding me? You get all these stupid atheists, they come out and they say, well, you know, I can show you in the Old Testament where there was a guy that, you know, basically fornicated or whatever he gave his daughter or something or his maid or whatever and they fornicated with her and he, and he cut her up and he sent her pieces what is that really god's word oh and there's another thing about how that uh, these men that they could take young women and ravish them and whatever else and then they become their wives and oh this is the god that you serve yes it is absolutely because you see this book is all, all about the depravity of man and the glory of the lord jesus christ that's what it's about. This book is to convince you that you're rotten and that you're, you're not good. There's none good. There's none that understand it. They're all gone away. They're... None that seeketh after God. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. You're a sinner. 
according to the book. There's no hope for you outside of the Lord Jesus Christ imputing his righteousness to you. You are so vile and so rotten according to this book that Jesus Christ actually had to come and suffer and die to pay for your sins because you're that ridiculous and stupid and idiotic and whatever other little adjectives you want to use. <laughs> well, those words aren't in. Okay, then use whatever you want. Go by the scriptural definitions of how corrupt you are. Right? And you get to that, have that understanding and you say, yeah, all right, yeah, I, I get it. I'm no good without Jesus Christ. Well, good. Good for you. But you see, it's not your will. It's not the will of the flesh to be put down like that. That's why people avoid Bible-believing preaching. Oh, it's too harsh. It's too critical. I went out of the church. I go to church to have fun and to come away feeling good about myself. I want to watch videos that inspire me and motivate me to be a better person. <laughs> then you don't understand the scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verses 1 through 6. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will, will of yourself, because you would try to better yourself. We should all be better people. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. To the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Let me just pause right there for a minute. What in the world? What are you talking about? In time past, the Jews were living like the Gentiles? Getting all messed up with all this pagan, satanic stuff? Yeah. You know why? Because they were leaving God all the time. Holy, righteous people. Here we go through the land, you know. My wife is dressed modestly and my children are all very well and respectable and, and all this stuff. What's that music all about? Is there some kind of rock concert going on over there? Well, yeah, maybe it's okay to listen to some of that. I get, oh, they're eating a bunch of things. It looks like some pretty good stuff over there that they're eating. It looks like they're having a fun time and kind of having a party, you know. And yeah, Maybe we could go there. Maybe it wouldn't be too bad. I mean, you know... Down there on the beach, uh, they're barely wearing any clothes, but hey, they're having fun, so who's to say if it's wrong? And you know, Read the Old Testament, that's what it was. They were constantly getting caught up with what the Gentiles were doing. Give us a king, we want to be like all the other nations. Hey Samuel, they haven't rejected what you say as my priest there in the Old Testament, Levitical priest, not Catholic priest, make the distinction. They haven't rejected you, Samuel. They've rejected me. I'm their God. They don't need a king. I'm their king. Oh, that's not good enough anymore. They want to be like the Gentiles around them. Okay. Well, then they'll have uh, lasciviousness, lust, ex excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Let's set up this. Moloch and Chemosh and Remphan and all these other false gods of the Gentile world. King Solomon. I have a bunch of beautiful Jewish wives here. A lot of them. A whole lot of them. <laughs> and, uh, but boy, some of those Gentile women. Woo. They sure are good looking. Well, they have different gods, but, you know. Uh, maybe try this out a little bit. You see? The Jews were supposed to be a separated people, concerned with the will of God, not their will of the flesh. But they started to go with the will of the flesh, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Did that make them two separate persons? No, the same person, but letting the flesh tell the will of God take a hike. Let's continue, verse 4. Wherein they, lost world, Think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. You always have to remember that, brethren. The most wicked, vile people that judge you, be they 
coworkers, friends, people out there in stores and whatever else, media, organizations, whatever, politicians, whatever, all of these wicked devils that judge you and say, oh, look at your Christian with your beliefs, you're holding to the Bible, you bigot you. They're going to give an account to him that judgeth the quick and the dead. Remember that. Comes the members of the ACLU, so-and-so, whatever, you know, and they stand there before God. He calls out their name. Come forward. Great white throne judgment. They walk out. Please. I, I, silence! Is their name in the book of life? No, Lord, it is not. Let's look and see what you did to deserve the lake of fire for all of eternity. Here it is. The record. And they're there. The Lord says, you said this about me and about my word. And this is what you said about my servants. Hey, servants, the ones that uh, you down there that you made fun of, step forward. Step forward. You step out of the line. However it's going to work. All the details aren't listed. But we know that they're going to be judges at the great white throne judgment. And the Bible's talking about it right there. They're all going to give an account. And then comes the words. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Get out of my sight. And you're worried about those people right now? About what they think of you? You know what part of you is worried? This part right here. Ah, oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Huh? We're so weak, aren't we? But uh, you see, if you can kind of make the Father and the Son different persons, well, that works out better that way, you know. Verse 6. For, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. <laughs> judged according to men in the flesh, but live a, a, uh, according to God in the spirit. Hmm. When you get saved, brethren, the Holy Spirit of God moves in, and now he starts to put thoughts into your mind. Let me get a beer out of... Oh, wait. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Well, let me go into the store that sells... Ooh, I'm a Christian now. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Hey, you know what? Um, I have to go wait for something. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, there's Time Magazine. Let me reach for that. Oh, wait. I probably should reach for my Bible instead. You see what I'm saying? You will live the rest of your life in the flesh. But you better live it obeying and submitting to the will of God. That's how you're supposed to do it. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Do what's right. Everybody else in the whole store is doing wrong. You should do right. Hey, there's uh, stories of some armored truck or whatever else, and it wrecks, and there's money blowing all over the place, and the driver's laying over there, and he's hurt, and people are just running, and knocking each other down, trying to grab as much cash as they can and stuff it in their pockets and run off and whatever else. Well, everybody else is doing it, and I do need some money, so I guess I should do it too. Or no, you should probably go and try to stop that thing from happening and go over and try to help that driver that's injured. Do you have that kind of character? Hey, um, everybody else out there is wicked. They're all some kind of wicked thing being done in your town or whatever else, a sodomite rally or something like that. Um, this is wrong. Should you go out and scream and yell and, hey, you know, this sodomy is an abomination to God? Well, if that what, that's what the Lord calls you to do, but maybe you could just take a lawn chair, go out there and just open up your Bible and just sit there and pray that God could stop the thing. But brother, Brian, my flesh would be really embarrassed by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the point of this whole thing. You see, um, modern churchianity is cool. It's hip. You know, showed the video a while back of this. Uh, I don't remember what the, the 
big jerk's name is or whatever else the guy that was the undertaker you know in professional wrestling and and his wife took him to ch church <laughs> you know and he goes in and he goes this is kind of cool you know yeah man that's that's what we should have as, as you know christians it should be cool yeah <laughs> uh, no it shouldn't no it shouldn't it should go contrary to your flesh Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 25. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The will of the flesh? For the flesh... Flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Almost like there's two different wills in one person. <laughs> but if ye, are, if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, I don't understand, because you see, my, my one person likes to go out and drink and, and basically live like the lost world, but my other person likes to stay at home and read the Bible. No, no. You have one person. God has one person. Not that hard. Verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You live after the Spirit of God. Not my will, but thine be done. Lord, what would you have me do today? Um, Lord, they are saying that I can't witness for you anymore at work. And I like my job. It's not a bad job. It's a good paying job. I, I've worked up. I've seen you already there and whatever else. But they're saying I can't witness anymore. Oh, boy. Not my will, but thine be done, Lord. If you want me to go and you want me to say something, then I'm going to say something. And there you are. You're at work. And somebody says whatever God's name in vain, you say, hey, you know what, I don't appreciate that, that's, you know, whatever, later on that day, um, you hear your name coming over the loudspeaker, call to the office, oh boy, <laughs> here we go, go in there, uh, yes, it's been reported to us that you witnessed on the job site after we were specifically said that that's not allowed anymore, and you get put on trial, so to speak, hmm, Verse 24, and by the way, you say, well, then how does it work against such there is no law? If I did right, then why would there be a law against it? Well, a just law. Say it that way. Verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. We read earlier. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. <laughs> we have two different wills, brethren. God had two different wills. It's right there. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are two different persons in you. There's not two different persons in the Lord either. Romans chapter 12. We'll end it here. Just as a little bit of a exhortation to you out there if you're saved and I really believe that uh, the reason these people have such a problem with Jesus being the flesh of God and that's all he is he doesn't have his own body soul and spirit um, that's separate from the father's you know spirit or body or whatever I don't know what you know still haven't quite figured that one out of the Trinity I mean there they there's confusion among themselves it's not the Trinitarian position is not some this is what we believe and that's the way it is and whatever else. Um, there's variation. And these guys, if you try to pin them down, it's like trying to hammer a nail into jello. It doesn't work. 
you know, they just wiggle all over the place. You know, well, you know, it's a divine essence. Well, no, okay, well, it's this over here. And then it's the, you know, and they come up with all these words, everything else. And you look in the scriptures, they're not there. That's the big problem. See, I'm a preacher. I have to be able to give you the same standard that I have. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, where your spirit's at, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of man. It's all about you. What you want in life, what you... What, is the, what do you want to do with yourself? Let me just be here today and just give you a motivational speech and just say, you have a special purpose. You are a special person. Uh, no, uh, it's the will of God that you're supposed to prove what it is. You're supposed to be led of the Holy Spirit of God. Your thoughts, bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. It's war. It's fighting. So, Trinitarian desperation uh, knows no bounds. Um, they will come out and they will say, well, Jesus and the Father couldn't have been the same being because after all they had separate wills. Separate wills, therefore, mean separate personalities. Separate personalities mean separate persons. There, I've proved it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you see, <clears throat> there is no God because we know that uh, we see evolution of microevolutionary level where people you know species adapt to their surroundings therefore we know since they adapt to their surroundings that they eventually if you go back far enough they would have actually had to evolve certain characteristics which means that they had similarity with other animals which did the same thing which means that they had a common ancestor and if they had a common ancestor then they all go back to goo which came from nothing accidentally at some unknown time in the past i've proved it and you're stupid if you don't agree with me mm. I have my philosophy and you better agree. No, that doesn't work. Two different wills do not mean two different personalities. And it certainly does not mean two different persons. And if you want to try to use that as an argument against the Godhead doctrine, uh, you have a problem. You have a big problem. Okay, and your big problem is God. And you will be answering to Him. You will give an account to him that is able to judge both the quick and the dead. All right. So, um, an important study. Wanted to put that together. Uh, two different wills does not mean two different persons. Okay. That is stupid. It is nonsense. Um, I mean, there are some things that God just makes it plain to you. You just believe what you read. You don't have to say, well, you know, let's, let's get deep here and, some guys start to try to make things really deep and, well, you have to study this. And I, you know, you need to study the, the, uh, hold on a second here. You should study the, you know, um, Baptist Confession of Faith and the Baptist Catechism. Or a modern exposition of the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. Um, or the, uh, uh, Catholic Catechism. Uh, no, I'm going to study my Bible. My King James Bible. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. If I want to be a useless philosopher idiot that goes to some social club, well then fine, wonderful, you know. Then I'll do that and leave the Lord and whatever else. Uh, no, I'm just going to believe what the book says. The book doesn't say persons ever once in relation to God. You say, can you prove that? I did in my book. Every single reference to the word persons is listed in my book. I wrote down every single one of them. There and there. There you go. And there you go. Proven. Not a big, huge book. Simple to read. Well, then you haven't covered every argument. I don't need to. 
Okay, I've covered them in my preaching and, th and teaching and things. And the whole thing is, if you, you know, the philosopher mindset is, I'm going to use the exception to overthrow the rule. I can prove that there's some sickle cell anemia that if people have that, then they can't get malaria. Therefore, that proves it's a beneficial mutation. So then I can take that beneficial mutation, which is idiotic. It's not a beneficial mutation. But I can take that one thing and I can overthrow all of natural science that can test and observe and demonstrate things out there in nature that proves that there's a creator, that proves that there's no beneficial mutation, which beneficial mutations are necessary to prove that species evolved slowly over time. You see? So I'm going to try to find any little argument that I can to knock Jesus Christ down from the position of Almighty God. I'm going to have to bring him down a few notches. And he's the second member of the Trinity. And he's, you know, he had a different will. So therefore, that proves he's a different person. And, and, and just keep knocking him down and knocking him down and knocking him down. You have a problem. You have a big problem with your flesh. Because your salvation is based upon that. Your flesh. A decision of the flesh. Not of the Holy Spirit. So that's going to be it for that study. I'm going to be doing one next on did Jesus have an eternal body? Another one that the Trinitarians will try to say. Um, so we'll get into that in the next study here. But, uh, um, you know, I, I don't have time anymore for this little uh, playing little nice things. And uh, it's, you need to be a little bit more gentlemanly and a little bit more gentle. And the. Here's the thing. I'm going to be doing some studies on this in the future and, and whatever else, but it's a sermon the Lord's preparing in, in my mind. The liberal Satanists are moving forward in their agenda, and the conservatives are making excuses for it. Very profound study. I've been thinking a lot about that whole thing. Well, I don't want to judge. You know, hey, somebody, okay, somebody does a thing. Well, okay, I'm not really for it, but I don't want to judge, and I don't want to judge, and, and you know, I don't want to preach to people. Hey, I, you know, it's my beliefs. I don't want to cram my beliefs down says the conservative because the conservative is more interested in working hard and paying his bills and giving a nice little time to his children and whatever else. There comes a point in time, brethren, when a man has to stand up and say, I am not going to allow you past this line. Right there's a line in the sand. You're not coming across it. And if I have to die fighting against you, then here's the time. I'm willing to take up the sword. I'm willing to say, enough is enough. Our founding fathers in this country here in America and a lot of the other countries too, um, they fought. They said, no, this, this moral de degeneracy and whatever else, it needs to stop. It needs to end. I'll fight. Well, I just think that we need to, we need to find common ground. Trinitarians and, and Godhead doctrine believers and modalists. No, no. Modalism and Trinitarianism are wrong. They're satanic. They don't line up with the scriptures. The Godhead doctrine does. And I'm not the creator of it. So, enough said. I'm going to be, um, I think going forward, there's going to be a lot more militancy and, and things. Please do pray for me. Um, because I've noticed that the only way that I can really put my flesh down is to get more militant. <laughs> Righteous indignation helps me to come out of depression and uh, feeling sorry for myself and whatever else. I just need to have that, the fire in my preaching and not not this, you know, oh, oh I, I just didn't, didn't mean to. No, I, I want to be very offensive um, in a good way, according to the scriptures. Please understand that. I'm not going to just go out of my way to offend people and whatever else just because I want to be a jerk. Um, but I'm just going to, I've always been very blunt and brutally honest, and I'm going to continue. I'm not going to make apologies. So that is going to be it for this study. Uh, next I'll be talking about the um, thing of did Jesus have an eternal body. Okay, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, 
we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.